What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in part four of our series, we're going to be talking about respiratory arrest. That's basically when you stop breathing. And of course, drowning scenarios and how we can hopefully help a patient who is say in respiratory arrest or maybe they're even in a wet or dry drowning scenario. Now, when we think about respiratory arrest, or basically someone stop breathing, this can happen at any time. It can happen, say, on a dive boat. It can happen at your local restaurant. And if you've ever been with somebody who's actually been choking on food, they are actually in what's called respiratory distress, which can lead directly into respiratory arrest. Once that occurs, that person is actually not breathing. And we're going to have to either, one, check to see if that airway is open, or two, assist them in breathing, whether we use some type of bag valve mask or even some type of face shield where we can give them rescue breaths. Now, typically speaking, once respiratory arrest sets in, it does not take very long before cardiac arrest starts. And of course, you're going to have to lay that patient down and of course, give them CPR. But there are several things that we can do just prior to that to hopefully get this person breathing again. Now, your SSI React Right instructor is actually going to teach you several different tips and techniques that you can use, say, on a person who is, say, choking. And if that patient gives you that telltale sign that they're choking, you need to act immediately. Now, whether you use, say, back blows, chest thrust, or even abdominal thrust, hopefully you can help this patient to get them breathing again by simply clearing up their airway. Now, if that does not happen and they actually go into full respiratory arrest, you may have to lay that patient down because respiratory arrest, of course, can lead into cardiac arrest. And of course, CPR is going to be needed at that point. Now, let's talk briefly about drownings. There's two types of drownings that your SSI React Right instructor is going to teach you about. One, of course, is wet drowning. This is where you asphyxiate because you get water in your lungs. And of course, the secondary type of drowning is called dry drowning. Now, dry drownings actually happen quite a bit. This is where a person has had a near drowning experience. They don't get proper medical attention. And of course, they get some type of infection, say in their airway or in their lungs. And the dry drowning actually occurs after the fact. So you may pull somebody from the water who's not breathing, you get them breathing again, they refuse medical treatment, and then of course they suffer, say, from dry drowning at a later time throughout the day. And this is actually very common. So it's very important that anytime you deal with a patient who is in respiratory arrest, or even say in a drowning scenario, that we contact emergency medical services. In short, pick up the phone, dial 911, get them started there as quickly as possible. Then you can actually assess the patient and of course provide them with care. Now, when it comes to infants and children, of course, we're going to do things slightly reversed. We're actually going to provide care before we dial 911, especially, say, for a child or an infant who is actually drowned. If you pull them from the water, you're going to give them CPR before you actually dial 911. And in short, a minute to two minutes is about the time frame you want to try to provide care to get them breathing again, or at least get that heart pumping to get oxygenated blood throughout their organs. Now, after a minute or two, you want to stop exactly what you're doing, dial 911 get emergency services, and then immediately provide care again. Now, best case scenario, there'll be someone else there with you who can actually contact emergency medical services while you actually provide care at the exact same time. Now, guys, that's going to do it for part four in our series of the SSI React Right program. We really hope this series helps you prepare for your SSI React Right course and, say, your final exam as well. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below, and, of course, I'll try to answer it as quickly as I can, as best I can as well. Stay tuned for part five in this series. That's where we're going to go over basic first aid techniques, whether it's burns, sprains, breaks, things like that. We're going to go over basic first aid techniques that you can use, even if it's a primary care situation or even if it's, say, a second secondary carrier position. So definitely stay tuned for that. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.